What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Crypto Blitz, your home for your crypto fix. I'm your host, Ripple Van Winkle. Hopefully, everyone had an amazing Thursday. Listen, you know it's kickball and softball. We got my first kickball game of the year. I can actually attend 6.30, followed by a little bit of a break, an hour. It sucks, I know. And in a softball game, I never felt so good. I can't wait to get back in the softball field. I'm healthy. My swing is back on point. We beat the number one team last week. We're one and one. We forfeited our first game. I think we got an easy game tonight, looking to go 2-1 and one on the year. But in this video, we got a lot more to go over. You didn't listen to that first video today. You need to give it a listen because Gary Gensler finally admits Bitcoin is not a security. It took the SEC 12, 13 years, but we finally have clarity for Bitcoin moving forward. And that's very significant, especially for the bull run, folks, because if now it finally admitted that Bitcoin's not a security, what does that mean? We can get Bitcoin spot ETFs. We have yet to see the institutional money enter the space, and the ETFs are going to bring in that institutional money. Think about BlackRock and all the money they are going to bring into the crypto space. And they're not just going to approve one ETF. They will approve all the ETFs because it doesn't just make sense to approve one. You approve one, you approve them all. But we're going to talk about Bob Way, Tom Emmer, Ripple Plus City, Copper, 30 plus different APIs, Donald's. He slammed Gensler. I got the clip for you. And Microsoft and Sony have announced they are getting into crypto for play to earn games. Something you need to see. This information was leaked. You're going to love it. I love it. Let's jump into it. Bitcoin, $26,538. It's currently down 0.16% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum coming in at 1628. It's up 0.25%. USDT and USDC both coming in at their dollar pegs. XRP. It's still a mean lean 50 cents, folks. It's like, it's almost like my live coin watch is frozen. Total cryptocurrency market cap, 1 trillion and 61 billion. This is how it all started yesterday, folks. Gary Gensler, a nervous Nelly. That's what he is. He knows what's about to come. He knew he was going to get lit up. You know these are the nights, the nights before leading up to these big meetings and hearings. He cannot sleep. How, how significant is Stephen Neroff's post? Well, John Deaton's going to explain if you haven't followed Stephen Roth, you need to you need to follow him. He's pretty much going to blow the whistle on Ethereum and everything they did and everyone that was involved. Just wait until these names come out because it is going to be a huge game changer for cryptocurrency moving forward. And I really do believe this is the implosion of Ethereum. I got to tell you, I saw one person who never talked to me ever. And he had tweeted out five times how massive my announcement was going to be, he's never spoken to me one time. I've never had a conversation with him. And then he said he was disappointed in my announcement. And I'm like, dude, you, you disappointed yourself from all the hype that you built up. All right. But we've been fighting for so long and people are so sick and tired and frustrated by all of this. I understand why people are hoping for, for more, but I want to put you how significant this is. All right. There is an email that just went out, not an email, but a tweet that just went out by Steve Neroff. OK, and I want you to to read what it says. All right. Remember that piece of paper that Joe Lubin talked about? And he said before the ETH ICO, I had a piece of paper in my pocket. Right. Well, there it is. Look at the date, people. Guess who got that piece of paper in Joe Lubin's pocket? That's right, Steve Mayeroff, all right? So that's extremely significant. And I want you to just think about that for a minute. That's extremely significant. And, and so that's why uh, I was excited about it. And you know, I, I apologize if, if other people kept hyping it up to the point where short of me announcing that the case was settled or that, that XRP was going to two bucks or something that it was gonna disappoint people. But we are getting closer to the truth. And I think it is significant. And I think it is big news because at the end of the day, how long has people been fighting for this, right? We just want transparency and we're getting closer okay we just want transparency folks and we are getting close to that magical note that lubin kept bragging about guess who has a copy that's right steven and that's about to come out bob way former ripple employee and why iso 20022 is extremely helpful to ripple to banks sales teams i i spoke about this before this is huge bob way stated 
but just for clarity, ISO 20022 is way better than you might think at first. It replaces the previous Swift standards MT and MX and adds a lot of other things. The reason that 2022 with transition is extremely helpful to Ripple's bank sales team is this means that every bank is required to implement new technology. Banks hate to change. An already working project change can introduce new problems, which means bankers get fired, but they are forced to make change. And with this new messaging standard, it allows them to tap into blockchains and to DLT techno technologies. He goes on to talk about what's going on, project budgets and management. But he says, even if banks wait for a settlement, their 20022 upgrade system becomes much easier for Ripple to now integrate with, which creates a larger pool of on-demand liquidity for banks. Remember, we just found out that the ISO 20022 messaging standard is more than just messaging, folks. Tom Emmer, you didn't hear what he had to say? He went after him. He went after Gensler good. And I think I actually played this clip for you in the first video, but Tom Emmer pretty much, and I won't play it again, he pretty much told Gary Gensler he needs to be fired. They need to get rid of him, and he's right. ISO 20022, let's do it. Put this out. Ripple plus City plus the Interledger photo protocol. This came out. Okay, it's an older document, but do not forget City put out about their GPS, the global perspectives and solution. And what are they talking about here? The interledger protocol. What else are they talking about? They're talking about real time value exchange with an XRP pool of money. What does this remind you of? How about XPool, which is now, I guess we call XPool liquidity hub. They can now source liquidity on demand. Think about that one. Chad, put this out, Cooper. Connects to 30 different public exchanges via API Walled Gardens, institutional digital asset trading. All major exchanges available, BitMEX, Bitfinex, Bitstamp, which is an on-demand liquidity partner. Bust down the wall gardens. That is exactly what's going on here. Something else that reminds me of what? Liquidity pool. Brian Donalds dropped bombs on Gensler. I didn't show you this one. You need to listen to this one. Then we're going to jump into Microsoft and Sony and their play to earn games and crypto. Do you remember where we left off, you and I? I do. You're a very good questioner, sir. All right. Well, let me refresh. Let me, let's bring some things up. Where we left off was, did you facilitate the payment for the Steele dossier for the Hillary Clinton campaign back in 2016? Because you were the CFO. You acknowledged that. You also said, um, in response to my question, that this payment was not something that I was aware of. Quote, unquote, those are your words. Interesting things have occurred since then. Um, John Podesta actually testified to a committee of Congress and John Podesta testified uh, to a question about was Gary, meaning you, was he day to day, hands on, signing every check? And so John Podesta testifies, actually he was under a deposition with a committee here in Congress. He says, yes, I don't know if he signed the checks, but he was there every day, meaning you. So let's circle back. Were you aware of the fact that the Hillary Clinton campaign actually paid for the Steele dossier, which unleashed one of the worst issues of intelligence malfeasance that our nation has ever seen? No, sir, I answered this six months ago, and this is the same answer today, no. You weren't aware of what was going on? Mr. Gensler, I find that very interesting because, you know, if I listen to some of the people and the staff that have left the SEC, you're very aware of everything that is going on. It's actually your MO. You're very hands-on. So you're going to tell the committee right now you had no idea that the Hillary Clinton campaign, of which you were the CFO on, sent money to Perkins Coie for a dossier that was phony that led to the spying on of a presidential campaign in 2016. You were not aware of any of this. Sir, as a chief financial officer in a political campaign, I was not aware of what a law firm was doing with some of the money that they got. Now, I find that interesting because in some of your other rhetoric about CFOs in, in, the, in, the, in the public sector, the private sector of our economy, you are very tough on CFOs. You have, you've said on the record on many occasions that CFOs have a fiduciary responsibility to the organizations that they cover, that they should be aware of everything that is going on. So how is that a standard you hold CFOs in the private sector to, but you don't hold yourself to that same standard? That's not a standard that the SEC holds CFOs to. It's about their financials and the, that the financials are uh, put together in accordance with GAAP and that the numbers are accurate. Uh, and that they're so did you accurately pay for the Steele dossier out of the Hillary Clinton campaign? 
Sir, I learned about that after, way after President Trump was a president and Hillary Clinton was a private citizen. All right, well, let's move on. We'll probably circle on that another time. He just, he lit into him. Brian Donalds, love you, my man. Way to go. Chad, put this out. This is big news. Xbox will be adding crypto wallets. So will PlayStation. This new type of game will be called a play to earn where players can earn money for gaming. Xbox goes crypto leaked and Microsoft roadmap includes the wallet plans. Here it is. Sony's doing the same thing here, folks. They create and play to earn games. They create and crypto wallets. You can start earning crypto. It is that simple. Everyone is moving over to play to earn. They are moving over to crypto. This is going to be huge to bring in that entire gaming community to the crypto landscape. There is a lot of money in gaming. That money, plus institutional money, plus the general public's money, plus the hedge funds, it's all going to end the crypto. We've talked about the blow up top for XRP. Let's talk about the blow up top for the total cryptocurrency market because it sits around $17 trillion. We get a rotation out of, out of the stock market. And we get the institutions coming on over. If we're bringing in the two biggest gaming companies in the world, Microsoft and Sony, what do you think is going to happen to crypto? It's going to go boom. And it's coming. This is all in perfect time for the bull run that is getting set up to occur towards the end of this year or into 2024, which is going to lead us into 2025. So many lives are going to be changed. You are so close to the finish line, folks. All you got to do is keep your head straight. Ignore the FUD. Stop jumping between projects. Sit back. DCA, not financial advice. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.